Pediatric National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale, or PED, NIHSS for short, is a tool to quantify the initial severity of a stroke in childhood. The PED NIHSS, a modification of the NIHSS for adults, can be done in less than 10 minutes. It can be summed up in one number, correlates with the long-term outcome, and allows a common language between all the caregivers to monitor the pediatric stroke patient. To assess the PED NIHSS, these general guidelines should be followed. All scale items must be scored in their exact order. Follow the scoring rules shown in this video to ensure reliability and reproducibility. Record the patient's first effort and do not coach the patient to elicit the best performance. Score only what you observe and not what you think the patient is capable of doing. The LOC questions item 1A tests the level of consciousness. Ask the patient one to two questions or stimulate the patient by touching him or on occasion use noxious stimuli to check the level of consciousness. The investigator must choose a response, even if a full evaluation is prevented by such obstacles as an endotracheal tube, language barrier or orotracheal trauma. Score zero if the patient is alert and keenly responsive. Score one if the patient is not alert but arousable by minor stimulation to obey, answer or respond. Score a 2 if the patient is not alert and requires repeated stimulation to attend or if he's obtunded and requires strong or painful stimulation to make non-stereotyped movements. Score a 3 if the patient responds only with reflex motor or autonomic responses or if totally unresponsive, flaccid and araflexic. For infants aged 4 months up to 2 years, multiply the score for this item by 3 and omit scoring items 1b and 1c. The LOC questions item 1b is based on the answer to two specific questions. The patient is asked the month and his or her age. The answer must be correct. There is no partial credit for being close. Only count the first answer. A patient that cannot speak is allowed to write the answer. Score 0 if both questions are answered correctly. Score 1 if only one question is answered correctly. Score 2 if neither question is answered correctly or if the patient is aphasic, stuporous or does not appear to understand the questions. Patients unable to speak because of endotracheal intubation, orotracheal trauma, severe dysarthria from any cause, language barrier or any other problem not secondary to aphasia are given a 1. This item is not scored for infants below two years age. Note, as an alternative for the question about their age, children aged two years and up can be asked to show the correct number of fingers for their age. Instead of the question about the current month, the child can be asked to point to a named parent or other familiar family member present. Use the name for that person which the child typically uses, for example, mummy. The LOC item 1C assesses the performance of two specific tasks and is only scored in patients older than two years. Pantomime and verbally ask the patient to do these actions. Close your eyes. Now open. And make a fist of your hand. Now open. The command to make a fist can be replaced with the command show me your nose or touch your nose. Substitute another one-step command if the hands cannot be used. Only the first attempt is scored. Score zero if the patient performs both tasks correctly. Score one if the patient performs only one task correctly. Score two if neither of command is performed correctly. Item two, best gaze is an assessment of eye movements. Only voluntary horizontal eye movements and horizontal eye movements provoked by the oculocephalic maneuver are tested. Nystagmus and disorders of vertical gaze are not tested. Ask the patient to track your finger or your face while you're moving it horizontally. If the child does not accurately follow, try to provoke the horizontal eye movements with the oculocephalic maneuver. Score zero if the eye movements are normal. If there is tonic deviation such that the eyes cannot be moved, score a 2. Everything else, including an isolated peripheral third, 
fourth or sixth nerve paresis is scored a one. Note, if the patient has strabismus and is able to move the eye over the midline, score a zero. For the testing of this item, unlike other items, you are allowed to coach the patient and not limit testing to the first performed movement rule for scoring. Patients that are in a coma can still be tested for this item. They may have gaze palsy that can be overcome by moving the head. In this case, use the oculocephalic maneuver. Item three, visual fields test the visual field of both eyes to confrontation. Testing is done separately for each eye, covering the other eye by finger moving, finger counting, or visual threat. If there is unilateral blindness or enucleation, visual fields in the remaining eye are scored. Score zero if the upper and lower visual field are normal. Score one if only a clear-cut asymmetry with partial visual field loss, including quadratinopia, is found. Score two for complete hemianopia. Score three for complete bilateral hemianopia or for blindness of any other cause. Severely confused, comatose, and aphasic patients unable to do this item score a three. Visual extinction testing with double simultaneous visual stimulation is usually performed at this point, although it is scored in test item 11. If there is visual extinction, a patient scores a one on this item. Item four, facial palsy, assesses facial weakness. To assess this item, pantomime and verbally request, show me your teeth, raise your eyebrows, squeeze your eyes as hard as you can, in young children, spontaneous facial movements should be assessed. Score symmetry of grimace in response to noxious stimuli in the poorly responsive or non-comprehending patient. It is important that everything that obscures the face, for example tapes or bandages, should be removed if safe and feasible before the assessment of this test item. Score zero for normal symmetrical movements. Score one for minor paralysis such as a flattened nasolabial fold and mild asymmetry on smiling. Score two for partial paralysis with total or near total paralysis of lower face. Score three for a unilateral or bilateral absence of facial movement in both the upper and lower face, seen rarely, for example, in certain brainstem strokes. For comatose patients, score a three. With test item five and six, arm and leg motor function for all limbs are tested. For children too immature to follow precise directions or uncooperative for any reason, power in each limb should be graded by observation of spontaneous movements. The aphasic patient is encouraged using urgency in the voice and pantomime. The assessment of the arm motor movements is done with palms facing extended to 90 degrees if the patient is supine, or 45 degrees if the patient is sitting. Drift is scored if the arm falls before 10 seconds as you count out loud and with your fingers in full view of the patient. For items 6, A and B, the assessment of the leg motor movements is done by extending the leg 30 degrees above the bed. Drift is scored if the leg falls before five seconds. It is okay to help the patient by placing the limb in the desired starting position. An initial dip after the release of the limb is not scored. Each limb is tested in turn, beginning with the non-paretic arm. For items five and six, score zero if there is no drift during the period of 10 seconds for arms or five seconds for legs. Score one if the limb drifts down without dropping to the bed during the time period. Score two if the limb drifts down to the bed during the time period but there is some effort against gravity. Score three if the limb drifts down immediately after the release and if voluntary movements are still possible. For this, it is important to encourage the patient and observe if there is some movement in the paretic limb. If no limb power or voluntary movements are observed, score a four. In case of an immobilization of a limb due to amputation or joint fusion, the score should be zero. For comatose patients, score a four. The next item, Item seven, limb ataxia, is an assessment of limb coordination. Each limb is tested in turn with the eyes opened. In case of visual defect, ensure testing is done in the intact visual field. 
finger, nose, finger is tested by holding your index finger in front of the patient at the patient's arm's length and asking the patient to first touch his nose with his index finger, then reach forward to touch your finger with his index finger. Repeat enough times to definitely exclude ataxia. In children, this task can be substituted by the task of reaching for a toy with the upper extremity. For the assessment of the heel shin test, it is allowed to help the patient by placing the limb in the desired starting position with his knee flexed and his heel set on his shin just below the kneecap. In children too young or otherwise uncooperative to test with the standard exam item, leg ataxia can alternatively be tested by the task of kicking a ball, kicking a toy or kicking the examiner's hand. Score zero if ataxia is absent. Score 1 if ataxia is present in one limb. Score 2 if ataxia is present in at least two limbs. If testing is not possible due to limb weakness or in a patient who cannot understand, such as coma or severe aphasia, then score 0. In case of blindness, test by asking patient to touch his nose from an extended arm position. Test item 8. Sensory assesses sensory perception. Testing is done on the face, trunk and limbs with tools that are regularly used to assess pinprick perception. Do not use other objects such as paper clips, pens or broken sticks. The examiner should test as many body areas as needed to accurately check for hemisensory loss. Hands and feet are not included in the testing to assure that the presence of a possible polyneuropathy does not interfere with the result. Check on both sides, alternating sides, and ask for differences between both sides. Double simultaneous sensory testing is usually performed during this item. However, is scored on test item 11. Score zero when there is no evidence for sensory loss. Score one for mild to moderate sensory loss. If patient feels pinprick is less sharp or is dull on the affected side, or there is a loss of superficial pain with pinprick, but patient is aware he or she is being touched. Score two for severe to total sensory loss. If the patient is not aware of being touched in the face, arm and leg. In the obtunded, stuporous or aphasic patient, test withdrawal from noxious stimuli to make sure that there is total sensory loss before scoring two. For patients with bilateral sensory loss due to a brainstem stroke, and for comatose patients, automatically score a 2 for this item. Test item 9 is dedicated to the assessment of language. In children under 6, spontaneous language is tested. In children aged 6 years and up with normal language development before onset of stroke, the patient is asked to describe what is happening in the attached picture, to name the items on the attached naming sheet and to read from the attached list of sentences if he was able to read before stroke. Offer the patient enough time and determine if he or she needs glasses for the exam. Comprehension is scored based on responses to the requests in this and the preceding test items. If visual loss interferes with the test, ask the patient to identify objects placed in the hand, repeat and produce speech. The intubated patient should be asked to write. In children over two years of age, score zero if there is no evidence for aphasia. Score one for some obvious loss of fluency or facility of comprehension and for reduction of speech and or comprehension that make conversation about provided material difficult or impossible. Score two for communication through fragmentary expression. If the range of information that can be exchanged is limited and if the examiner cannot identify materials provided from patient response. Score 3. If the patient is mute or if speech production and auditory comprehension are not usable or there is a global aphasia. For children aged 4 months to 2 years, score 0. If the patient alerts to sound and has spatial orientation to sound visually or by behaviour. Score 1. If the patient alerts to sound without spatial orientation. Score 2. If the patient does not alert to sound. Comatose, stuporous, or mute patients due to any other cause will score three on this item. In item 10, dysarthria, we test the patient's articulation and clarity of speech. 
If it's possible, depending on age and other deficiencies of the patient, the patients are asked to read out loud the words attached on the scoring sheet or to repeat them after you. Score zero if there is no evidence for dysarthria. Score one for mild to moderate dysarthria. If the patient slurs at least some words and, at worst, can be understood with some difficulty. Score two for severe dysarthria. If the patient's speech is so slurred as to be unintelligible or mute, and this is not attributable to dysphasia. If the language is not comprehensive due to any other non-neurological reason, score one. For comatose patients, score two. For patients that cannot speak due to intubation or orotracheal trauma, this item cannot be scored. The last item is item 11, extinction and inattention. Usually, sufficient information to identify neglect can be obtained during the prior testing for children. In children over two years of age, score zero in the absence of any abnormality. Score one for visual, tactile, auditory, spatial, or personal inattention or extinction to bilateral simultaneous stimulation in one of the sensory modalities. Score two for profound hemi inattention or extinction to more than one modality. The presence of visual spatial neglect, or anosognosia, may be taken as evidence of abnormality. Since the abnormality is scored only if present, the item is never untestable. For children aged four months to two years, score zero in the absence of any abnormality. Score one, if there is either a sensory or motor deficit. Score two, if there are both sensory and motor deficits on the general neurological examination. If the patient has a severe visual loss preventing visual double simultaneous stimulation and the cutaneous stimuli are normal, the score is zero. If the patient has aphasia but does not appear to attend to both sides, the score is zero. Comatose patients automatically score two on this item. As soon as you have completed the whole test, add up the scores of each item to derive the total score. Congratulations! You have now completed basic instruction in the use of the PED NIHSS. To assure reliability and reproducibility of the score, it is important that you follow the rules provided exactly.